Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Thrive, a podcast that is helping you live a holistic Christian life. I am your host, Tekla, and today we're going to be talking about... Okay, so the last episode that we had about genotypes, we had a lot of positive responses from that. And today we're just going to be looking at another very interesting health topic similar to the case of genotypes, the issue of blood groups and the RH factor. So to help us navigate this interesting topic, we are with us today, Dr. Panache Makaha, who's going to be taking us through it. Panache, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Maybe you can just start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Thank you very much for having me on the Thrive Podcast. So like you mentioned, I'm Panache. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a lover of Jesus. So my medical experience, like I've been practicing for four years now after medical school. I'm really interested in mental health, like that's what I would like to specialize in. For now, I'm a general practitioner. Interesting, interesting. Now, maybe let's start with the basics. What exactly is a blood group? And our age factor, and how are all this determined? So, blood groups. This is a classification of blood types based on inherited differences in you know, in people in our genes, and based on the antigens on the surface of our red blood cells. So, our red blood cells they carry the antigens that are used to identify blood groups: the A antigen, B antigen, or antigen, like the ABO system. Then there's also the research system, like that's the class on your blood group, like you know your A your blood group is A or A, B plus, A minus. So the racist factor is the negative or the plus on your blood group, depending on whether you're racist positive or you're racist negative. There are many other classifications, but the most common ones are the ABO system and the racist the rhesus system, that are, those are the ones that we usually use because if they are not considered, especially when there are issues around transfusion, if we don't consider like the ABO type and the rhesus type, there are risk for transfusion reactions and they can be lethal. It is important to know your, whether your race is positive or negative because failure to know and then there is like you getting racist positive when you're supposed to be negative, getting negative, it results in severe hemolytic reactions in case of transfusion or childbirth. So my racist status doesn't affect me. If I'm racist positive, it's okay. It doesn't affect me. If I'm racist negative, it's okay. It doesn't affect me. So I'll give you an example. If I am racist negative, what happens is it takes exposure for racist antigens to be formed on my red cells because like I'm negative, like racist negative, D negative. I don't have the racist antigen on my red blood cells. So if I get exposure to racist positive blood, let's say during transfusion or during childbirth, my child is racist positive, I am racist negative. My child then passes on those racist positive antigens to me and then my body develops antibodies against the rhesus antigen so usually the first exposure is not lethal because like my body is just developing antibodies against the rhesus positive antigen that has been deposited in my blood so what happens next is the next time i have exposure to rhesus positive blood it's going to mount a hemolytic reaction why because i now have the antigens to attack the rhesus positive that is coming because i know i'm rhesus negative and then a severe hemolytic reaction happens. So it is very important to know whether your risk is positive or negative in case of transfusion, the blood that you're going to get, is it positive or negative? And also, especially in pregnant women, it is important to know if you're having a risk positive child or risk is positive or negative because there's always like something that can be done. You can get the antigens, the anti-D injected to prevent those hemolytic reactions. It doesn't mean like you're not, so you cannot have children when you're risk negative and your child is positive. You can. But there is need to know like prior to that happening so that you know so that something can be done so that you and your child will both live without any complications. So blood groups and rhesus factors, they affect a lot of things in a medical emergency. It makes a real difference for someone who knows like their blood group and someone who doesn't like it's a whole lot of difference because in case that we need emergency transfusion, if we know that you are AB, you know you like your blood group AB positive, we can just like 
give you the AB blood positive in the emergency setting without needing to cross match because cross matching like you need 30 minutes and then those 30 minutes can be like life defining 30 minutes to check like we're still cross matching and then trying to figure out what blood group are you what type of blood should we give you what can we do so it makes a whole lot of difference in an emergency setting to know what blood group you are it makes our decisions very easy but it's unfortunate because in our setting most people don't know okay i myself I just got to knew my blood group like recently but I didn't know I was just like walking inside because maybe we don't really think about the emergencies kitty I will be in a place where I want the blood so it's really important to know so I will give example like why a mismatch is life threatening if I am a positive and then you give me B blood what happens is I am a positive and then if you give me B I don't know if that B stuff is antigen. So my body will attack that B because to my body that is foreign. We don't want something that is foreign in our body. My body is designed to fight off anything that is foreign, anything that is unusual. My body is trained to fight that off. So that's what my body is going to do. My body is simply going to fight it off. And then if I fight it off, there's going to be a hemolytic reaction. So a hemolytic reaction, sort of like breakdown of the red blood cells. So if the red blood cells break down like they're the ones that carry oxygen they carry blood to like all the places the brain the heart like it can be very detrimental to have like that hemolytic reaction happen to you so yeah it is very important to know your a your blood group and a mismatch is very life-threatening you don't want to be given like blood which is not your type because it has very little consequences and then there are people like people who are all negative all negative they are universal donors they can donate to anyone and everyone so it's important for me to know my blood group if i'm all negative like i can quickly like donate and then the next person can get blood and then they're universal recipients like in the case of an emergency people who are ab positive they are universal recipients they can get blood from like any blood group so if i know my patient is a b is a b positive in the case of an emergency i won't struggle to try and cross mesh to get them the blood they want i just give them the any blood that is available because i know their blood group and i know they're not going to be reactions so again i'm going to say it is very important for one to know their blood group and it saves a lot of time this is a life saving Thing to know the blood group of a patient it serves so much time and 30 minutes five minutes in the case of an image it makes a whole lot difference it can be the difference between life and death it is critical in pregnancy to know whether your risk is positive or your risk is negative it can be the difference between you like holding your baby at the end of nine months or the smiles you're happy now i have a baby or being told be sorry like you lost your baby how is this important we can give an example if i am rhesus negative and then i carry a rhesus positive fetus what happens is my body will mount an immune response against the rhesus positive antigens that my blood my baby carries and then my immune system then attacks my fetus and then cause that hemolytic reaction that we're talking about and then you see like the baby can be born with jaundice they're yellow they're not coping with life because their red blood cells they now have that antigen that is affecting them so it is very important to know that you're pregnancy and then knowing makes a whole lot of difference because if you're a rhesus negative patient carrying a rhesus positive baby you can get an anti-d like you can get an immunoglobin shot and then you can save your life you can save your baby's life so it is very important for every woman to know their blood group to ensure the health of both the mother and the baby we don't want to be pregnant for nine months and being told that you can't you can't hold your baby because your baby died usually the first baby is safe because this transfusion reactions they're usually okay during birth when there is like blood transfusion like from the mother to the baby the baby to mother during birth so usually the first child is safe because the transfusion had not happened where the rhesus positive blood of the baby gets to the mother but for the second child if you get another rhesus positive child 
down now in your blood already has like antigens against it that is positive and then it will then attack the fetus and then you can like consequently lose babies and then you wonder that your first baby was okay was healthy but you are now losing babies like with subsequent pregnancies and then you wonder like you think maybe it's witchcraft or anything sometimes it's not just witchcraft it's just like a bio incompatibility racist incompatibility that causes that that's, that's quite enlightening um especially the issue of miscarriages there because you're talking about the RH factor difference between the fetus and the mother can actually cause miscarriage somehow but i'm glad that you mentioned that um there was a medical solution for that but you can never be able to apply that solution without actually knowing your blood group without actually knowing your RH factor status is that it and getting the appropriate medication in time and as you as you spoke about um so i think this is very much vital information for all viewers so given these implications that you spoke about especially that of a mother and child um should couples consider the blood groups or rh factor before getting married or having children well, every parent contributes to their child's blood type, the ABO, depending on their genes, their blood type that they contribute to their child's blood type. But what's really important is to know like the rhesus blood group, is it, are you rhesus positive or are you rhesus negative? Because ABO, like you can be A and then give birth to your child as B, it's okay. But the rhesus part is that the one that is very important to know if your rhesus negative and your rhesus positive. But in general, we can just because if your rhesus negative, your husband is rhesus positive, there is a chance of you getting a child who is rhesus positive. So there is need to have that entity given. It is important to know your blood group, but we should know that like no blood group combination is a contraindication. For having children you can have children whether your husband is resource positive you're negative like whatever blood group you are every blood group is compatible for people to have children there's no contraindication whatsoever but knowing is an advantage because you know how to prepare in advance in case there are going to be complications with blood group incompatibilities but anyone can marry anyone anyone can have children with anyone how do blood groups and the RH factor relate to other genetic conditions. Um, do these factors affect treatment or risk in any way? How do they correlate? So yes, our blood groups predisposes us to some genetic conditions. Like there are diseases that someone with a certain type of a certain blood group type is prone to have than someone who is not of that particular blood type. So I'll give an example. People who are A, 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 B, B plus, A plus, they have an increased risk of getting thrombolytic diseases, like thrombolytic diseases, diseases that involve having blood clots in your blood. So they increase increased risk of having heart attacks, stroke, deep vein thrombosis. So people who have blood group A, that would be blood group A, B, they have an increased risk of getting thromboembolic conditions. And then also people who are group O, they have increased risk of getting ulcers. And then Large group A, B, there's increased, increased risk of cognitive impairment. And then group A, there's increased risk of gastric cancer. So it's better to just know your blood group because then when you know your blood group, you know I'm blood group A, I'm at risk of having gastric cancer though. So if you have other risk factors, you need them to be like extra careful because you know already you are predisposed to that because of your blood group. Being predisposed to something because of your blood group doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to get that, but it just increases your risk of getting that particular disease. Like being blood group O increases your risk of getting ulcers. Being blood group AB increases your risk of having cognitive impairment. It then helps us to sort of like know why certain people are getting some things because you know there are things that you'll be saying like there's no explanation to this is just happening but sometimes it gets back to their blood group predisposing them to having certain kind of disease and then knowing will also help one to know like the kind of lifestyle they 
elderly, for example, someone who's at increased risk of having hypertension, they have to be proactive to not get hypertension, to like to be careful like of the kind of lifestyle they live because they know like one means I'm going to get the hypertension if it's different from someone who is not predisposed to that. They can be like living a sedentary lifestyle. Yes, they can also get the hypertension, but their risk of getting it is lower than for someone who has a blood group that's predisposing them to that blood, to that particular condition. So the right time for someone to know their blood group is now. Like if you're my age, if you're an adult, you don't know your blood group, the best time to know is now. Because it is very important to know your blood group in case of an emergency because like an emergency is not going to wait for you to be 10 years old to happen so that you need a transfusion. So there is no saying like it's too early for you to know my blood group. Even your baby should know their blood group. You should know the blood group of your baby. And then is it easily accessible? Certainly in our situation, in our country, it's not easily accessible because most public hospitals, they do those, but they do it at a fee and then the service is not really up to par because you can submit your sample and then never get the results. So it requires one to be proactive. You can have your blood group being done at any private lab, any private facilities. Of course, you do it for a fee, but it's worth it. And then for those who are blood donors, National Blood Services will do it for you. They will send it to you. They will let you know what your blood group is. But it's important to know. It's important to invest in knowing your blood group. I think it's quite interesting and insightful. So, you know, five is all about uh, bridging the gap, the connection between the body, spirit, and soul. We're looking at a Christian perspective. So how does uh, this scientific understanding of your blood group link with Christian values? How does faith and knowing your blood group go hand in hand? So faith and the knowledge of blood groups, it goes hand in hand because it helps us to appreciate our maker. You know, like the way it says, you're wonderful, fearfully and wonderfully made. You're unique, like you're your own kind. You're not like anyone else. It helps us to appreciate that we are, like we're all created by God, but we have our differences. And then in our differences, God is calling us to be united in our differences. Like in the case of the blood groups, like your race is positive, your husband is negative. It doesn't stop you from getting married because of your differences, but like there should be unity in our differences and in actually knowing our differences, there's harmony and unity in our differences. And then also from a faith perspective, I think it's very important to know your blood group because it helps you to focus your prayer. It helps you to know how to pray because if you know your recess positive, negative, your husband is positive, there's a chance of having a recess positive child at risk of losing the baby. Then it focuses your prayer. You now pray knowing like things that could be happening and then you have sort of like focused prayer, strategic prayer, not just like praying like God protect my baby. Yes, that prayer works, but it's always nice to be specific with your prayer. So it's very important. It helps us to focus our prayer and to pray with direction in regards to our babies, in regards to our blood groups, even in regards to, say, someone who's dresses, who's blood group O, and then O negative, they know they're universal, a universal donor. It gives you the appreciation to know that you can actually help. Like, God created you with this blood group because he knew, like, it's in you to help. Like, it just helps you to pray from a perspective. You could see, I am this. This is my blood group. This is where I stand. I can help in these ways. And then you pray with precision. True, true. So do you have any final message for all viewers? Okay, so in conclusion, we have agree that it is very important for one to know their blood group to prepare knowing their blood group it helps us to have like mental stability it helps us to prepare like even choose our lifestyles well because we already know the kind of diseases that it, our particular blood groups predisposes us to thank you so much for shedding light into this topic and i've been enlightened and i'm sure the viewers have been enlightened and incredibly grateful for your time and your expertise. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it for today's episode on why remember your journey to a holistic Christian life is a continuous journey and you're not in this alone. We are in this together. Please subscribe, like, and share.